my gosh. Hi, everybody. It's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. Welcome to the Big Art Quest. Uh, this is where we demystify the art store and make all those art materials fun and easy for just everybody to enjoy so we can all have access to them anytime we might possibly want to. Today's topic for the Big Art Quest is how to slow that drying di time down of your paint for curly painting. Right, John? It is? It is! I did not know that. That was my awkward intro to my co-captain, John, who is the Sherpa Tracker. He runs the cameras, reads the comments, and keeps this live broadcast hopping. Hopefully, I, we're going because we have a stream that we have to serve. We're streaming. Gives us. We're surfing. And my, yeah, my tape is definitely... Your, your mic's all droopy now. My mic is so droopy and sad. That's okay. We're going to get it fixed. We got, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry it won't imp impact mind. the broadcast so i'm going to basically cover all the different ways as artists we can slow the drying time down of acrylic paint and the types of products and options that are out there for you from completely free to specialty products that do or do not work yes. does that sound good that sounds wonderful i think it's a question i get asked a lot like how how can i slow the drying time down this paint so the first myth i want to completely dispel is that we're all having the same experience with our paint. Yeah. Right? So we might all have Golden Paint, or we might all have Dollar and Rally, or we might all have Liquitex or Matisse or Utrecht or any of the brands that are around the world. Mm -hmm. But we don't all have the same weather, and we don't all have the same humidity, and we don't all have the same interior conditions. Yes. We, as artists, are in unique circumstances in our studios, from studio to studio. So one of the things that's incredibly troubling and difficult for artists is like a product will work really well for someone, but not may not work as well for them. And that's about their conditions. Yeah. So one of the things I want you to think about is when you're getting advice from somebody about a product that would work really well, ask yourself, are their conditions similar to yours? Right. Right? You wouldn't think it's... I mean, I, I'm sure there's something in cars, sense, or, but yeah. there's a lot of things that are like this. Baking is like this. All the bakers immediately got this idea. Conditions impact results. So the first important tool in the artist's arsenal for slowing down the drying time of paint yeah. Yeah. is water. It's free. It comes out of your tap. If you have a professional paint, your paint can take up to a 30% mix of water. Really? Yes. Huh. Now, recently this has become controversial, even though acrylic paints were made to be thinned with water. Because, of course, as you thin the paint, it alters the polymer composition of the paint and can change the chemical reaction of the paint, change the paint slightly. Yeah. And if you're a professional artist and you're painting for a museum or you're painting to have your artwork be in the world after you for a long time, that's something you might want to consider. But if you have a budget and financial concerns and you're not really concerned if the museum thinks you're the biggest genius in the world, Water may be your best choice. And mm -hmm. again, the stuff was made to work with water. Your paint companies, if you look them up online, will often tell you the exact amount of water that they have tested with their experts in their labs that this paint can handle. So you will hear terms like underbinding or the paint breaking down, but if you're following the instructions of the manufacturer, and probably not. Probably not. I have underbound one thing in my life ever and i'm a complete rebel yeah with what i do in my art just complete aren't i you, you, you are a pretty rebel here. you're yeah my ease is all painted up there's been things that have happened here that should not have happened <laughs> not recommended by the manufacturer <laughs> <laughs> all the time so that's the first thing it's just the jar of water you can thin your paint with it um as you thin it, it impacts the body of the paint and it increases the flow and it comes from your tap, it's free. The next thing that you can do to slow down the drying time of your paint is a micro mister. Now this is not the ideal mister. This is just the 39 cent mister from my um, local pharmacy store. Mm -hmm. But you can get a microlized mister that does the mist so fine it leaves no water droplets on your palette. And you can just spray, 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 spray your palette as you need to to slow the drying time down. And that's skinning. We all have the skinning. Yeah. Skinning. You guys have had it. It's gross. It's mm. like the top of cream of wheat and certain cereals and gravy and, and your paint. Should you just like mix that into the paint when you get it? Just like mix it in there so you can 
get a little skin on the top of your paint. You just mix it into the paint. The skin? Yeah. Can you just mix the skin in? Yeah. Like when you know, you get that little skin of paint <sighs> over the top. I think like there's actually this weird moment. There's a window. <laughs> and it's short when you can probably get the skin back in there and sort of disperse it. But what's happened is that paint has started to cure. So you just got to scoop you it off? You don't uncure acrylic paint. Acrylic paint does not uncure. You can uh, remove it with acetone. You can so break it down with alcohol, but you cannot uncure it. So what do you do if you're if it, if it starts to skin and you got a big? Do you just yeah, you got to pull the skin off. It's just you've lost that paint. Yeah, that's my real recommendation. You've lost that paint. Don't try to reincorporate that. You're gonna get chunky texture, unless of course your whole technique is using skins and chunky texture, and you know that's a different set of rules. And don't be all commenting because we know <laughs> you're talking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> right. And acrylic paints, they come in different viscosities, right? So some of them are heavy bodied and chunky. Those tend to dry a little faster. And the fluids, the soft bodies, tend to dry a little slower. Yeah. So there's that that can impact you. You've got water, you've got that. You've got a stay wet palette. In the iCard, I have a video on how to make a stay wet palette out of a cake plate. A, a what? Cake plate. Oh, yeah, that's right. A ca the, it's, not, it's one of those little trapper, the plastic mm -hmm. things, yeah. You get them from Kroger or wherever. Yeah, you can go buy one around forty dollars, twenty dollars. Um, I just haven't found one yet that I love, so I don't have one in the links and description below with more information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a bunch of products in the links and descriptions below, the affiliate links, but I do not have a Kate uh, Stay Wet palette because I just haven't found it yet. When I find it, I'll share it. I just haven't found it yet. I think most of the great products out there are generally handmade, hand done DIY jobs by artists. Yeah. Right, and so that's. You know, you can do your own DIY, and everybody's got their own little formulation. I don't like the wet paper towel thingy. Yeah. Because I like to control. I do a lot of dry brushing. That's true. I'm yeah. not trying to be an oil artist. I'm an acrylic artist. <laughs> yeah. And that's a question to ask yourself. If the paint drying is bothering you a great deal, right? There's mm -hmm. this fabulous product. It's oil, and it doesn't. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. And it's kind of okay. It doesn't it's ever dry. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't ever dry. But it does give you a lot of time. And that comes to the next product that can help us with the drying time of our paint. Say you're allergic to oils. Happens. Some people are very intolerant to them. Um, there's a whole bunch of products that are called open paints. Oh, yeah. Those are pretty cool. Golden makes a product. I will pull it out. I have one you of their uh, swaggy bags that you get. Um, if you go to any of the golden demos, they provide these around the country at art stores for free for you to go to. If you go to them, and yeah. I wholly recommend that you do, you are generally given a little swaggy bag and sometimes a little project that goes with it. I have a lot of these because <laughs> I don't ever miss a free demo. <laughs> and in there, in the wonderful swaggy bag of things that they give you, is an open paint. There it is. This is a slow drying acrylic has a whole bunch of agents and products you can add to it and you can slow and slow and slow it down. Crazy. There's also interactive paints and there's a whole series of other paints that exist out there that are about the acrylic not drying quickly. But I don't really paint with those. We don't teach those there. I just want you to know those are available to you and those classes are out there. Generally, it'll be like somebody painting some really soft roses. If you see a, yeah. a person with a bunch of tutorials with a bunch of soft, kind of fluidy roses, generally they're using a product with a slower drying time. Yeah. Yeah. Because cool. if it looks like an oil and it's not an oil, it's a slow drying acrylic. <laughs> well, while you're, what are you sippy sipping there? Okay. What do you got there? So the, the Sherpa was at the zoo. The zoo? <laughs> the zoo with my daughter and my mom for my youngest's birthday recently. And we ended up having a really long walk. It was uh -huh. longer than expected. Yeah, an epically long it walk. It was an epically long walk. And I realized I am not walking enough and <laughs> making enough healthy life choices. So this is kombucha. Yep. Which is basically vinegar juice. <laughs> it's really good. I like it. Kombucha. I like it. It's, I But, you know, it's really, no, it's a sour, sweet drink. It's made by a SCOBY. It's made by a SCOBY, and it's supposed to help you. I'm not doing this instead of walking. I realize I also have to do walking. <laughs> you must walk too. <laughs> I must walk too. And so now I'm getting in Sherpa shape and I'm walking and I'm working on those things. Healthy life choices. Mm. 
Well, I'm going to say hi and I love you to all of our big, massive, awesome community who's out there with us. We've got like over 160 people here, and the number just keeps going up and up and up. And I love to see our questers. Lots of questers here. We have all of so our, our moderators here, and I wanted to say I love you and thank you guys for all the kind words out there. They were going on about how beautiful you look this morning. I do. You do. All your sparkly, your sparkly hat. I like my sparkly hat. So I feel good in my looking, owl hat. We're going retro. Good. We're retroing it up. It's we're gonna, you know, right. we're gonna have to we're gonna have to join Mark and Bonnie out in the camping world. We'll we'll glam it up. We'll glamp it up. Glamp it. I'll glamp it. Yeah. All right. All right. So back to what you were saying mm -hmm. about epically non drying paint. Epically non drying paint. Next product. Okay. Oh, and wait, real quick, big hugs to Donnie Jen who's under the weather. We want to send Aww. real love to her. Yeah, feel better. But that was it. Okay. Feel better. All right. Palette wedding spray. Palette wedding spray. All right, this is by Liquitex. It's a palette wetting spray. Um, Golden makes a similar product that I can never seem to get because it's so liked by the plain air artists. It's never in stock. I can get this one. I've used it. Um, does it keep my paint from skinning? It does. Doesn't impact the body of my paint. Um, definitely. Um, you can use this weird trick. You can do this. You can spray your canvas first mm -hmm. and paint it onto the canvas. I'll actually demo that. And it kind of, if you're plain air painting, it primes the canvas. It's kind of a crazy deal. Definitely have to follow the instructions. The negative to this awesome, awesome product is some of the caps clog. Now, I know it's not all the caps clog because some of the people are like, oh, no, I have had one for years. It doesn't clog. Mine clogs all the time. Yeah. Yeah, the solution for that is I keep a little jar of acetone or alcohol around and I just drop the cap in it for a minute and then it's unclogged. So it's not a terminal problem. And then she asks me to come over and pump it repeatedly until it works. It's not a terminal problem. <laughs> it's just a problem in some of the... You know what I mean? I don't know what to tell you. It's Liquitex Professional Palette Wetting Spray. And here, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So I can spray this, say... Ugh. Well, now it's clogged again. <laughs> it did, there it goes. Oh, it's in such a bad mood. This is the issue with this thing. Now it's going, right? You can you can spray this first and then... Well, you see my point. This is not a great testimonial to this. It's a great product and not such a great delivery system. It's a great product and a challenging delivery system. Like yeah. Patek's love you, but seriously. It, it, it. There's some more sciencing. Yes. Science this some more. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and it's not all of them. No. And again, conditions. I live in Houston. Houston gets hot and it can be dry because the AC in the houses. We have all kinds of craziness going on. Yeah. My studio is under these whack job lights. I'm using, I've got canvas boards out today to mess with. So that's what I've got. Yeah. Oh, boy. Now I have this stuff all over my tubes of paint. It just went everywhere. It just did. It did. I so not it. a great um, testimonial to that product. I'm going to go like this. And <laughs> we're going to pretend <laughs> that didn't happen. All right. Okay. So we're back. We're back. So and, and you guys have seen that. And you've heard about that. The next product that you can use to improve your circumstances is FlowAid. 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 Now is that, okay. So is this different than blending medium? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're going to get to that in a minute? I'm going to get to that right now. Oh, okay. So your flow aid improves um, the way that your paint flows off your brush. Some of you have really talked about, it's like, it's just not coming off the brush right. You know, it just doesn't feel like it's going on the canvas right. It doesn't feel like it's going off the brush right. And then you've got to look at it. Is the canvas a problem? Right. And so if you've uh -huh. fixed the canvas and you've gotten a decent gesso, the cheap gessos are a nightmare, but you've gotten a decent gesso. And you've done everything else right, and you're using a good paint, then probably that you have environmental circumstances which are impacting you. I know it seems crazy, but it's a thing. Yep. Flow Aid can help you. You just add that into the water. And this product I do use, and this product I do like. There it is. You know, it just goes in the water. Again, manufacturer's instructions. Um, uh, okay, so here's the deal with this. This is not a binder, so you cannot use it for an acrylic ground. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, that's a mistake that artists will sometimes make. This is not an acrylic ground. Gotcha. 
You, you need to do an airbrush medium or something for that if you want a fluid acrylic ground or mm-hmm. glazing medium or any other product. It does, however, when added to your water, I don't know what it does to the environment, um, it does help how the paint goes off the brush. It, it flows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it and does. I guess, uh, and, and Valerie says Matisse has a flow aid as well. Yes, a lot of the companies do. If they're, if they're a professional serious acrylic company... You know, Amsterdam is going to have it. Utrecht's going to have it. Uh, Windsor Newton's going to have it. Steph Grumbacher. Uh, anyone who's got a serious acrylic line of paints is going to have slow drying agents and retarders and fluid mediums and, you know, things to keep your palette wet. They're going to have these products. They will change up the names because they all want to be individual. Yes. That's awesome, isn't it? Have an, they have do an that. angle. Yeah, they got to have an angle. They got to have it there. They're like, this is our style. <laughs> it's, our, it's our style of stop. And then you're like, yeah, but I just want to know what it is from jar to jar so I can compare. They don't really want you to compare is their deal. <laughs> so then we're down to the slow dry and retarding blending mediums. Yeah. Bunch of products out there. I have looked at personally this group of products. I have looked at, on my mom's recommendation, slow dry blending gel. Oh, sorry. I'll keep it here. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 elude me day, right? It's a little jar. Um, it's not crazy pricey. It's um, supposed to slow the drying down. These most of them, as a group, will claim to slow it down um, about forty percent. No, thirty to forty percent. You get thirty forty percent extra time. Of, and the reason they tell you that like that in those estimates is because they also know environmental factors will impact how these products react and how your paint reacts and what you're dealing with. If you're painting in Alaska in the dead of winter, you're getting a completely result than somebody painting, say, in the Gaza Strip in summer. Right. It's just, it's not the same for your paint. Yep. Now, if someone has, 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 has a question about acrylic grounds. Yeah, I have an answer. We should go back and look at the last art quest. Well, we haven't done grounds yet. We haven't? Oh, I thought we covered no, some of that in there. The, fir- the last art quest, if you'd like to know, there's a playlist of the big art quest if you're just new here and you're like, I just need to know about mediums. Um, we talked about what they are, what's a medium and what's an additive and what's in the mediums and what we're kind of looking at. We started to understand the terminology. I have broken this up into segments because these products are that diverse and that complicated. Cool. So next we'll be doing acrylic grounds. We could do acrylic grounds next. We hadn't decided. Okay. So, <laughs> so what what is an acrylic ground as a? It's pose- a surface prep. Okay. It's a it's a preparation for your acrylic paints. Like a gesso, is a ground. But then there's also grounds that you add, that right. can give you effects. Like there's grounds. I use a ground and absorbent ground in my painting practice that lets me do a watercolor effect on canvas, without the paint underbinding. Now isn't that Merkin? Turtle oxide. No, that you're talking about rickettsia iron oxide. <laughs> that stuff. <laughs> that's just that's a, that's a medium. That's a medium. Okay. That's used as a paint. All right. I just yeah. want to make sure. I, I love me some rickettsia iron oxide. I, that, I, ever since you see, I've seen that, I thought that was the coolest stuff. So I'm like, when does the lava come back? The lava. Oh, we ha- actually that's a ground too. Oh really? Yeah, you can get lava, actual lava. Hey, who calling you? Somebody called. Somebody does not know we're alive. Everybody, they don't know. I turned them off. Know. Nobody knows what we do with our free time. They think they like, make cat videos. <laughs> if Paint. they even understand we make YouTube videos. <laughs> Let me tell you what you don't want to take to dinner at a family meeting. It's like, what you doing with your life? We're making YouTube videos. <laughs> that is like more than religion or politics. That just stops the room. Oh, th- see, they were warmed up for it because I've spent the last 15 years of my making life video making, games. making video games. But so. it was like you could see... <laughs> The, the disappointment about the video game <laughs> job choice actually found a new level of disappointment. Like, everybody was like, Ugh. Wow, like you found a new level of fail. It was right. <laughs> <laughs> they thought you had maxed out the disappointment, but you hadn't. Nope. Nope. And, and so Kristen, Kristen was asking, is this live? So, yeah, it's live. Yes, this, this is live. <laughs> <It's> live. <laughs> All right. Then we also have here, this is an additive, right? Yep. But it's really a medium because an additive would be something crazy that you put in. Though, actually, if Golden says it's an additive, just do whatever Golden says. They're, they've just researched it more than you. <laughs> <laughs> they really have, or me or anybody. Um, this is a retarder. Um, they call it... Golden is notoriously funny with their names, and so these are retarders. Ah. 
which just means um, if it's open, if it says open, slow dryer, retarder, they all mean slowing the drying time down to the paint. Gotcha. Okay. Then we have, um, I have two sizes here because I get a bunch of these. Slow dry blending mediums. Right. And then I also have, and I had bought this just because I needed to have a different brand. The Grumbrocker Acrylic Retarder for acrylic colors. I use this in the Hummingbird. The Hummingbird can be used for your mini quest. Because your mini quest is going to be using some of the techniques we're talking about today. Um, they're going to be using some of the techniques we're talking <laughs> It's going to call. What's that? You have a call. I'm trying to, get, trying to tell people to not call us. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> use some of these techniques in your quest. Thumb me down. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just, woo. Other thing we're going to talk about. Everybody that keeps asking me about liquid white, right? Which was um, a gesso preparation created by um, Bob Ross to do that. And a lot of people have some homemade concoctions. Mm-hmm. What I'm going to suggest to you is something that you can do yourself if you feel like you really need to have some liquid white. Right? To me, the the wonderful bit of acrylic paint is that it dries. But again, I understand, like, I have to use some of these products because my studio is hot. In the summer, yeah, I'm stuck. Right? I'm stuck using some of these products because my studio is hot. So let's start with our first option. Right? Yeah. We're just going to mess around here. I'm going to put out some ultramarine blue, like you do. Like you do. Wow, I really need to put that <laughs> in some... Uh, some uh, so, yeah, sorry about that. My caps really need a cleaning. I'll tell you that right now. When the moms call twice in a row, you have to answer. Oh, Lord. You know. Yeah. You're just making sure everyone's We're going to okay. start with water. What is that? As water. Just water. But you have, is it now, is that water with blending? With the, there the is flow aid in it. Flow aid yeah. in it. Yeah. So I guess it's more than just water. But it's, you know, it's water. And we're going to brush this paint out on the surface, right? Okay. And, you know, hey, it does its thing here. Right? I'm going to just paint sort of an abstracty background here. Now, if I wanted it to be a little darker, I might pull some paint here. And while these two are wet, you know, I can blend wet into wet here, right? That's all about having a light brush technique. I'm using a filbert right now, number 10, with a stiff bristle. But you can see we get a nice blend here. Now, I don't know if you can see with the stuff all around. Okay, nice little blend. But already, it's drying. Huh. Which is, I think, where people get frustrated. Now, but this flow agent will uh, It doesn't help. slow the drying time down at all. It just improves the flow of paint off the brush. Will it, and will it help with underbinding in that respect? No, it has no impact on underbinding. Okay. None. has no binder in it. Just ah, a flow aid. Gotcha. And okay. they really specifically tell you that. And you can go to both the Golden and Liquitex website. I really like the Golden website because they have the most extraordinary stuff <laughs> that they've researched. So sometimes it's fun to see what they've done with their free time, mm -hmm. um, things that they've figured out. <laughs> but and, huh? Okay, so and, and underbinding is when the paint releases. Yeah, what happens is you've broken the paint down. You've broken the binders of the paint down so that they can't function anymore. The acrylic polymers can't interlock, and it flakes off the canvas. It might lift off the canvas. And underbinding can be a function of cheap paint and bad manufacture. But if you know you've got a good paint company, then it's probably that you've over the paint with water or some agent, some additive, sand, something that has interfered with the function of the paint. Yeah. That's all it is. I'm sure there's more, actually. I talked to some of these experts, and then they're like, <laughs> no, no, but there's more levels. <laughs> You're like, oh, Lord. Well, Joanne says thank you. She really appreciated the explanation there. Oh, I don't mind. I'll explain any of this anytime. You can ask me anytime. Because here's the thing. It, it it's, it's not that it's complicated. It's that you don't know what you don't know. Like, you don't know about yeast until somebody explains to you about yeast and bread, right? It's not that the concept is complicated. And then still then, it can be really hard to make bread, right? Yeah. It takes a little bit. It's not that we can't all learn bread baking. Or that only some people can make bread. It's just, you know, there's that curve. No. Kind of exact same thing. Have you ever heard of using glycerin as mm -hmm. in water as a flow aid? Mm-hmm. Yes. 
And, and there's some videos on it. There are, yeah. So here's my deal. Uh, I'm not going to say who. It doesn't really matter. But I will see a post about somebody saying this paint did this or this paint did this or this paint foamed or something I've never seen in decades of working with paint. Yeah. And in every case, <laughs> it's that there's some home chemistry happening there. Yeah. And that's all it is. I don't get those experiences because I work with products that are designed to work with each other. I do no home experimentation. Right. Because I don't like my paint to do crazy, unexpected things like foam. Right. Right? Never seen it. Decades of painting. In all kinds of conditions. So my thinking is, and the reason I don't necessarily do things like glycerin or make my own additives or any of that, is I want, personally, a very consistent experience with my paint. And I get really, 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 and John has seen this upset if my stuff doesn't work. Gotcha. But, but here's the deal. We're not all the same. And you may be a maker. You may be a tinker. Yes. You may need to experiment with glycerin to see how it works for you. But you might need to make your own additives. And the information is out there, and you can do it. But that should... you should, Sherpa doesn't do it. You should exp- <laughs> that should be your experimentation. Yeah. My thing is, is, I'm working every day. I need the painting to have a resolution, and I need to just know what it is. And I work with these products because I know for a fact, um, you know, Golden works with Liquitech. They act like they don't. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is, all the pro companies, their products generally interact with each other pretty well. Yeah, they're pretty... Yeah. And they have pretty smart chemists and scientists that really understand what's happening. And so they produce products that are very consistent. Yeah. So I'm not sitting in my studio going, what's that? I mean, unless I did it. <laughs> Sometimes I look at I'm like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> but it was me. <laughs> That's okay. But I just don't want to have that crazy experience where I'm like... Is that frothing? Right. I just can't even imagine what I think. I would run out of my studio. I'd be so scared. <laughs> <laughs> I would just be very concerned. Next thing I'm going to add is some slow dry blending medium. I'm going to I'm going to do this over here. Okay. All right. And I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to mix it into the white. Right. Now, the first thing that you might notice is that's made our titanium white a little more translucent than it was before. Titanium white being a very opaque paint. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me keep adding this out. This does extend your paint. This can save you some money on some of your more expensive paint. It's more expensive into the titanium white, but you know on your pricier paints, um, mediums and gels can be a, a way to save money. Yeah. Okay, so I've got this here, and then I can be like, well, let's uh, do a little white into a little blue, and we'll see how the blend is here. All right. Nice little blend going. And we're just kind of seeing what kind of blend we're getting. And we're going along, and we have this medium in there. And we'll see kind of how long it takes to dry. We may not just sit here and watch it dry. <laughs> <laughs> right. And look, you could put a hair dryer on it. You could. Yeah. Hair dryers go on it. This is not, by the way, um, a double blind, seriously scientific test. Yeah. Okay, if you want that, if you need that, if you're a professional and you want to discuss chemistry, right, and the radical innovations in acrylic mediums, paints, pigments, blah, 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 please go to the Golden or Liquitex YouTube channels and have a blast. Yeah. <laughs> because they do. They provide you with scientific results, right, that are done by trained professionals in controlled conditions. Yeah. My studio, your studio, is not a controlled condition. The temperature in here today will not be the temperature tomorrow, and I will get a different result every time I come in here. Yeah. Not a controlled condition, and nobody is claiming that it is. You don't need to write me three paragraphs about controlled <laughs> conditions. <laughs> Could you push your canvas up a little bit there? I can't. Well, it's caught on the, oh, it's the wet pout spray glued it down. <laughs> it glued everything down. It's also a really unexpectedly good glue. <laughs> That's great. Right? So, now what's happening here that I don't always necessarily enjoy is, I and it's not bad, this one isn't too bad, is I feel like sometimes there's a, ta- a tacky phase. Right? Interesting. 
But this is still blendable. It's still working. You can see me softening these edges, right? And getting more of that sort of effect you might possibly see with oil. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Well, gosh. Another I'm... thing that we could do is put this open paint here. All right. Again, this isn't scientific. We're not working this scientifically. Now, according to Golden, the open products can be used with their other acrylic products. All right, with varying results. There's a whole bunch of information. You would definitely need to read it. Yeah. And, again, my, my studio conditions being somewhat different than theirs. Sometimes when I mix them together, I don't like the tactile experience of the mix. Nothing more complicated than that. So, there's a question here. And not all the time. Just sometimes. Yeah. What? I'm not sure what condition triggers it. <laughs> <laughs> what is an acrylic binder? An acrylic binder is the polymer products that they use to keep the pigment suspended. Gotcha. And is that something you I'm can... I'm surprised I actually know how to answer the question <laughs> like that. <laughs> now, is that something you can just buy in a little, little squeeze tube to add to your paint? Well, um, yeah. Actually, I think I have seen uh, binders available. I think I've seen polymer medium, huh. just straight, clear, that you could add to paint. Um, gels and mediums, generally, uh, sometimes they are just a polymer medium. So those that'll be labeled clearly on the jar. Interesting. Could have it. But generally, you're looking for some results. So maybe you want a heavy body, or maybe you want to make your paint gloss, or maybe you want to do some other other thing. Some other other thing? Yeah, some other 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 thing. Now, I want to point out that some of this is already drying on my open paint. Conditions in my studio being what they are. Is everything okay? I need tissue so bad. The cold's getting to me. Mm. I have a little, nothing bad. Don't worry. Don't stress out. Don't freak out. Just a little head cold. Nothing bad. At all. It's all good. It's all good. All right, thank you. I'm gonna cover up my little thing here. Just give my nose a blow. If you let me know, I'll go. Okay. I'm coming here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna rinse my brush out. And so it's still a little wet, you know? And this is all, you know, it's, it dried slower. That's what I'll tell you. Yeah. And lights, heat, humidity, latitude. Ooh, that makes a pretty color. Where? The ultramarine blue and this alizarin crimson that they gave me makes a really pretty color. I can't see where you're mixing. Oh, no, in my water jar. Oh. Look at that pretty purple. Oh, that is pretty. <laughs> Just weird things that you notice in the studio. So now we have the biz. Yeah. The golden additive for increasing the working time of acrylic paints. Even how they word it is like, I probably have something sealed. Uh, yeah. Thought I'd have a beautiful new bottle for you guys to see. How sweet am I? That's very good. Yeah. And I'm going to say hi and I love you to all the cool people in the room. We have over 200 people here all hanging out. So please, please, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Yes. Are we, you know, I, do, I don't, uh, I keep getting reminded by my moderators how I don't ask that enough. <laughs> yeah, and we got to do that, actually. And you know, they're right, because you know what? They do it so great, our mods, and our yeah. community does it so amazing. Your guys' call to action, it's the inclusion of people to come paint with you is amazing. We forget that. On the replay, there's no read the text. Yeah, there's there's nobody out there, and they're going like, <laughs> so comment and subscribe, click the button. And so every once in a while, I you know, I, you know, I come out here and I almost feel bad saying it because that you know the moderators do such a great job out there. So, but that's uh, all it is is that there's just no one to say it once the broadcast has been re put up. Yeah. Right. So thank you guys for being patient about the fact that these have to go unlisted for a little while. After yep. the live, Just and then they're uploaded. Yeah. Well, the process is a YouTube, which is kind of like a crazy thing when you think about it, that all the live videos go to YouTube and get processed and re... It's crazy. It's just Excuse crazy me. stuff. All right. So now I'm going to do the retarder. Here's the thing. Now, Golden's little thing on the back is like, and they really mean this because it's all like in caps and stuff. Because Golden will totally tell you. <laughs> they, do they have... 
Yeah, they, yeah, they, awesome. they yell at you in text. I'll tell you right there. So what does <laughs> no, it say? It says, do not use as medium. And then in caps, it goes, for thicker applications, do not add more than one eighth retarder paint. For thinner applications, do not add more than one to one retarder paint. So what they're saying is, if you are doing an impasto painting, if you're doing a painting with real thick, gesturally brush strokes, why are you even putting a retarder in there in the first place? <laughs> Huh. If you were, it needs to be a small, small amount because what will happen is this will mess with your paint. But if you're, say, painting a portrait or a waterscape or something where a sky, where blending is integral to what you're doing, yeah, you can do one-to-one. -one. That means you can have one part paint. Aha, look at the blend here. Oh. To one part um, medium. And then they're like, listen, this is this is all again, they're telling you this is not a this isn't the binder. And the reason they're telling you this isn't a binder, if this was a binder, you can just add copious amounts. Because the binder itself, the polymer itself, we'll will just, hold up. You just keep binding. Yeah, it'll hold up. But at some point you have to be just like, this isn't gonna hold up. So what I'll say here, immediately what I'm gonna tell you is this, and I've had this experience before, has beautiful flow. And what is that? That is the lovely way that the paint exits my brush and applies itself to the canvas. And and which which This is the golden artist color retarder. Okay. I got four fluid ounces here, says it in three languages. There is a link to the product in the description. You don't have to get it from there. That's definitely an affiliate link for us, but that way you can even just check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you are. So you can see where the red paint is still not dry and is blending into our space here. See that? Yes. So that is the open paint. And you might be like, if you're a portrait painter, you might be like, wow, that would be helpful to what I'm doing. Yeah. This, however, would be a nightmare if you were trying to dry brush. <laughs> Just not fun at all. Not fun at all. So we have this here, right? And we're kind of seeing this blend and I'm really enjoying this. Look, I'm just blending, blending, blending. And it's not a problem. You can see where it's kind of dry because it's not lifting and blending. And you can see where it's still very wet and it's blending. And that's the purpose of these products. Gotcha. Right, and I'm using this board surface. This is a really good way to have economy in your painting. These um, canvas boards, because they can be like as little as a dollar a piece. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're not a high quality product. <laughs> so it's a good place to test things too. I'm going to put out some slow dry blending gel. Interesting. Blending gel. And normally I would use a palette knife and be real lazy and use this brush <laughs> to put it out. Um, I never like dispensing from tubs. It's never been my favorite, but, you know, sometimes you have to. So I've used this before. My mama loves it. I am, I have had, now again, different studio, different conditions. I have painted with it and had some gumming. But I have these crazy conditions in my studio. <laughs> Ian asks, what would happen if you add glue? <laughs> like you would have glue in your paint? You'd have glue in your paint. You would change the chemical composition <laughs> of your paint. Now, this uh, slows drying time and thickens colors, improves blending, and adds transparency. Large quantities may temporarily lighten color until dry, dries, clear, and glossy. And it tells you about it. So what is this different than the other things? Well, already, you, you saw the first things. They were all kind of mushy, weren't they? See yeah. it over here. It was like it's self-leveled. This has body, which means if I'm painting with more painterly techniques, but I need a blend, and that does happen yeah. on occasion, guess which product I have to use? That. That. And here's the deal. That's probably why my mom likes it, because she does very thick paintings. And notice also, it didn't have any um, mixture ratios. I see. Right? It's just saying it's going to slow it down this much, and we can go... And, you know, put it out like this. And probably a lot of that brush stroke will stay. Huh. So Jane was saying that in some mixed media applications, she mixes PVA with paint. PVA glue, I'm assuming. Uh, you know, I'm sure in mixed media you can. 
Look, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Don't let, don't be limited, right? right. Like Jane's, like she's rocking it. She's like, I can PVA glue into my paint. You can do that. That's a thing, right? It's not this thing. No, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a thing. There's, there, and there's lots of different ways you can apply your stuff. Yeah, yeah. We're just talking about. You know, a consistent, predictive result with no surprises. That's what we're discussing. And see, this is still not dry, and I'm still working this. And I'm still working this, and I'm still working this. And this has still got some blend here if I needed it. Look at that. But there isn't any more through here. Dry, still a little wet. So the open is still a little wet. This from earlier is totally dry, and the space is wet. We gotcha. have learned something. I don't know what it is, but we learned something. And the last, and really what I loved, and I used this the other day, is the Grumbrocker acrylic retarder. Comes out like this weird, I like to call it tadpole slime, like you scrape tadpoles. Um, and this one says, mix retarder directly into artist acrylic colors and our painting mediums may be safely used in ratios up to 30% by volume. So what this is telling you is that this, like water, has a point where it will break down your paint. However, you know you've got this product if you need body. So you're not stressed. So you just need to know what is for what. That's all that's happening here. You just got to ask yourself sometimes what is for what. We're going to get into this. I really like this one was my favorite of um, the products. So now it's important Weirdly. to read the labels because di yeah. <laughs> different manufacturers have different tolerances. They do. And different products have different tolerances. Now, what about mixing these together? Can you mix... Like, you, can you use what you just put out with some of the other stuff you previously put out? I mean, well, we're doing that. Oh, wow. Right? Because it's in here. And that's what I'm saying. This isn't oh. scientific. This is what probably actually happens in your studio. But because I'm... The chances of me having a really unexpected reaction, as long as I'm reading the instructions, as long as I'm, you know, playing along... Yeah. I just mix these two. I'm having some crazy reaction, right? The chances of me having something really unexpected happen on the canvas I was counting on is slim. Yeah. And that's the point. You know? Yeah. You can make stuff, and you can experiment, and you should. Right? There you go. Still in there. Oh, I love this stuff. I just rub it in there. I just love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And it's just... This one is... Okay, so this is... So here's my deal. You can see the thing we painted. You can see how it's drying. Oh, the one thing I was going to show you. What are you going to show me? What are you doing? Where are you going? I can't. You just off the screen. Now. I'm sorry. I added gesso to my palette. And I'm going to drop my one I was painting down. Okay. I'm going to show you something. All right. Gesso off my palette. And I can do this with either the retarder, the acrylic retarder, or the slow dry blending medium. Okay, you're what can I mix up? Up to 30% into gesso. You're putting some of that on your palette? I'm putting some of that on my palette. I, mean, I don't know. I need a different brush. Come here, brush. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> I'll take you. <laughs> I can't get to the other one. So what have I got here? I don't know. It's off the screen. Okay. It, oh, this is off the screen? Yeah. Okay. Darn it. Sorry. Is it on the screen now? There. Now I can see it. Okay. So what I have here is gesso yep. and retarder. Gesso right? and retarder, okay. And I'm mixing these together. What does that give me? Uh, slow drying gesso? Yeah, or what is fanceline often called? Liquid white. Oh, liquid white. Neat. For the purposes of painting wet into wet. Oh, I see. All right, so if I were sitting there and I was, I was supposed to do that and then I was supposed to... Do one of these little, oh, I've got a big brush, and I'm oh, neat. painting along, and, and look, I just have a little bit of atmosphere and a little bit of clouds. and a... Seem familiar? Oh, yeah. Mixes right in there, gives you 
a little weird cloudy effect. So that's effect. how you do that. That's how you do that. I don't know if anyone's excited about that, but yeah, it's it's. I'm watching you and watching chat, so I'm actually kind of enamored by what you're doing there. <laughs> and it does. It won't feel like regular gesso. Interesting. It won't feel like regular gesso, and you won't have any problems with the binding and surface prep of this if you follow the manufacturer's instructions. So if I were, say, trying to paint along mm -hmm. with somebody who was doing a wet and wet oil, this would be something I could do as an acrylic artist to have a similar experience without changing mediums. Gotcha. So if you were doing that, that if you wanted to have that bob wet on wet effect, you could... Yes. And, and there's a myriad of artists on YouTube here teaching wet into wet oils, aren't there? Yeah. Right? And you might be like, I really like that painting. You want that effect. I want that Yeah, but I don't have those products. And you don't want to switch over. You could just... Yeah, and the, and the first block, I think, to most acrylic artists is that wet gesso. Interesting. That's right? really cool. Right? And this, by the way, this... Yeah? Again, as long as you're following recommended instructions, you're not going to have a problem. You can also do the slow-dry bending gel if you don't want to even have that risk. That is so cool. I'm pretty impressed. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and it goes deeper than this. This is the turtles all the way down. <laughs> I have seen artists prep a canvas with, with different resistant retarders. Yeah. Before they started painting outside in plain air. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Painting right into it. Huh. Now, that's got to be a product you know isn't going to break down your paint. Yeah. Right? Or you have to get very familiar where those tolerances are and stay within them. And I bet that's like what Jane's doing when she's mixing glue. She's learned her tolerances and she stays within them. Probably, yeah. And that's what you're always doing as an artist. You're figuring out your boundaries. You're figuring out where can I break these boundaries, right? Where can I, where can I, you know, misbehave a little? And a lot of that ex is experimentation. And it's experimentation. And you should experiment. You should absolutely experiment. I'm going to grab some of this red here. And the white, the gesso is still blending. Now, we know regular gesso would not still be blending. Just so y'all know. Gotcha. But it is. And I can get a very soft, blended effect, if I needed to, into my gesso. If I needed that for what I was doing. Wow, that's pretty cool. And gesso could not dry faster, so... Because <laughs> huh. it's chalk. Right. There you go. Wow. There you go. That's pretty cool. It's not that... It's it's just... You're just you just literally asking yourself... Wow, this lesson went by really fast today. It did. But you know what? We're going to be seeing you guys Saturday to paint a really fabulous mountain landscape with wildflowers. It'll be posted up later today, so you can see it. I think it's going to... If you've been painting those little little silhouette pine trees with me going, what are we doing all the time? You're going to suddenly go, here's the payoff for that skill. Well, right? Uh, yeah. And, and I wanted to, it, before we go, give big hugs to, you know, Flame Gremlin and Mona and Alan and Jane slash Ethel and... Uh, you know all of our moderators who've been out here today. I know that I think I saw Bonnie in here earlier. I saw, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mark may have been in here earlier, and, and Karen and, and Michelle and Joy and all of the people who come and hang out with us and Ian and, and, and everybody Katie on the replay. When you guys Danielle, come in on the replay, because I know Joy. you guys have jobs and lives and can't necessarily make the lives. Yeah, we and love, we appreciate it, and the fact that you guys always take that time to comment and tell us that you did come that you did watch and you're enjoying what's yeah, happening. There's so many of you guys that are out here with me chatting and I read your comments as we go. It means so much to me. There's like over 200 people that joined us today. So thank you guys. Love you guys so much. Good question. And remember yeah. the hummingbird counts as your quest yeah. in the oh, iCard. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to have more videos and stuff coming up. So wet palettes in the iCard playlist for the big art quest is in the iCard. card. This will go unlisted for a little while after and then it'll be back up. Yeah. But for you guys that have it in the cache and you're watching it, no worries. It finishes out for you as long as you don't click away. Mm -hmm. But even if you do, it'll be back in a little bit. And I want to see you guys um, Saturday. I want to see Saturday. everybody Saturday for what is going to be. I know this is. Okay, John, I have to tell you something. What's that? I know I'm working on this painting. And I've told John this is the painting they've been wanting. Oh, yeah. This is the painting everybody's been wanting in acrylic. Because this is a painting you normally only see with 
um, oil artist because it's got craggy mountains. It's got fluffy pine trees. It's got the kind of valley swoop. It's got wildflowers. It's got rocks. It's got <laughs> grasses. That's it awesome. is that Rocky Mountain unbelievable scene that you guys have been like everybody in acrylic art wants to do if you survive the waterfall um and actually in some ways i think it'll be easier in some ways than the waterfall because there's so many diverse colors wow right and get my hat on because i'm, just, <laughs> I'm so serious. serious this is the painting you've been waiting for this is the painting you've been looking forward to this is the one that acrylic has been looking forward to and i'd like to drop that it's not the last one we're gonna be we're gonna be That's... in those happy trees and mountains for a little bit and show those oil guys acrylic is pretty awesome too. So like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys know you're here. Share with your friends. Let YouTube know you're love that you're here. We love you. We'll see you guys at the easel really soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.